Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals, and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope you are well. It is so good to have you tuning in today. What an episode we are going to go through today. I'm going to try and keep it quick and short and snappy because I know you're busy. You're running businesses, scaling businesses, doing all the things. You are many things to many people. At least you are if you're like me. And yeah, thanks for giving up your time to listen to this episode. So having difficult conversations with team members. This is something I talk about with people all day long, most days, right? In some way, capacity, form, like it just is a thing, right? I have to do it myself sometimes, clients have to do it, most of us have to do it, right? If you've got a team, you're going to have to have some difficult conversations. And when I say difficult conversations, like, you know, it it depends what you classify as that. Like everyone's got a different timeline and and different kind of thing about what that, that means. So... Why do you need to have them in the first place is what I'm going to dive into. Well, actually, let's just backtrack. Let's just, again, go further into what does a difficult conversation mean. So what I mean by that is if you know you need to say something to someone and you just don't want to do it, (laughs) or you don't know how to do it, or you don't know whether to do it, or you don't know how far to push it, um, that often can be like a signal. Sometimes you might have a collection of things that are annoying you and frustrating you and you just don't bring it up because it's only one thing and then you're like, oh, it's only one thing. So like, I don't want to be picky. I don't want to be that person so that you don't. But then they keep doing something that annoys you. And so over time that builds up. Another thing might be that you have a situation where someone just kind of isn't really like working out, like it isn't fitting for you. It isn't happening in the way that you'd hoped for it. And then that can feel a bit, downheartening to you and you feel a bit like "Mm." and so you might need to have a conversation with them now there's many other situations it could be straight up that they've done something really wrong or like they've really made a big mistake that like they shouldn't have done because of xyz thing and that means that you need to have the conversation with them but in general I think a lot of people especially as women and I don't want to play into this as in like women don't like having difficult conversations because neither do some men but I just mean generally overall I found in my work, you know, I work with women all day that women do struggle with this because we've been told to be polite and pretty and sit there and all this other host of negative bullshit that we've had to deal with that we're often trying to do things when we're in business that isn't the stuff that comes maybe necessarily naturally to us or that we've been encouraged to do as children and as young people. And so it can be you know, quite weird. Also, a lot of us don't like conflict. So we don't really want to like disrupt the status quo. We don't want to offend anyone. And I think this is what it comes down to ultimately, right? A lot of the time when it comes to having difficult conversations with team members can get really difficult because we're lovely people. Like we're lovely people. We want people to be happy. We don't want to upset people. We don't want to like be a dickhead. We don't want to be awkward. We've often come from corporate things where we've had really horrendous managers or you've had a bad manager and you're like, I never want to be like them. Like I think so much of this anxiety maybe around having difficult conversations with team members comes from all the bad experiences we've had of having difficult conversations and whether that's us as the employee or whatever you know just in some way we've not had a great experience and I think that really like scars us and we get really worried about it and as I mentioned I think so many of us are just really lovely people and so you don't want to you don't want to hurt anyone right and you never know how your words and what you say are going to mean to someone, even if you have a really good intention. I think that's the really hard bit. However, what I would say is intention is everything. And if you come from a place of really meaningful, well-meaning intention, then, you know, that also puts you in good stead longer term. But aside from all of that, now we've worked out what it actually is and what I'm talking about, I then want to discuss with you why you need to have them, because this is something that I think you have to get your head around. Like, If you do not have difficult conversations and you leave things unsaid and you just let them bubble over, they will come and bite you on the ass. The problems will get bigger. The things don't ever go away, really. Like, it always comes out in the wash again, even if it goes for six months and then all of a sudden it comes back. 
you always end up with this underlying frustration and underlying frustration comes out in passive aggressiveness, it comes out in lack of team community, it comes out in just this like disjointed productivity. It's just not the best, right? So really, really think about like, yes, I need to have these because I need to have them for the sake of everybody else in my business and myself. Now, touching on everyone else, this is another thing. If you do not have these conversations, you are really showing a certain narrative to the other people that work in your business and this is where you have to put your foot down. If amongst anything else, this is the only reason you do it, then let it be this. And I'm not saying it should be the only reason, but I'm just saying, if you put up with shitty behaviour, you put up with low performance, you put up with things that are not right, even if it's lack of attention to detail or it's that they don't fully, they don't you know, have a good quality of work or whatever it is, do you can't you can't let it slip. You can't put up with it because there's other people in the team. And this really, really is hard for people to get their head around because sometimes you will have someone who is an incredible team member who is really amazing and yet they also do some really negative, disruptive behaviours. And then there's this whole issue of like, well, what do we do? Because maybe they're a salesperson and they're the highest biller or they make the most money or they do this or they do that, but then they also have a really negative side. And you have to stand in your leadership here and you have to do the really difficult thing and you have to apply the same room for everyone, which is that it's unacceptable. And so you have to have that conversation. And that does mean that maybe, you know, you don't get what you, you know, there's a knock-on effect to that. And that's why most people won't have it. Because if that person is the best salesperson or the highest biller, and then you're saying to them, well, this at Y and Z, you worry because you're like, well, shit, they bring all the revenue in. So what we're going to do if they just don't like it and leave or they don't, you know, something happens and that makes it difficult. Like, That's a real honest worry and I understand that and I hear that. But for the sake of your team culture, for your team overall and the whole of your business, you cannot let this stuff stuff slip. Because I have seen what happens if you do let it slip. And it ain't pretty and it isn't good and it can cause you issues for years and years and years down the line and it really, really sets a mood across a business that is not a positive one. But going back to why you need to have difficult conversations with team members, the other reason is because you cannot build a business on a half-assed approach. You just can't. Do not do it. You will end up with a business that you resent, that you don't like, that is not what you wanted in the first place. And so as you add more people into the mix, yes, that can get difficult. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it costs you a lot of money. But you have to, have to stay true to what you want and what you want to build. And that might mean letting people down. That might mean saying things that other people don't like. But you, as the CEO, as the visionary, as the strategic lead, have to understand that that is part of your job. It is not your job to keep everyone happy. To a certain degree it is, in the sense of certain things you do. But in the sense of the strategic direction of the business, it is not. It is not someone else's business. It's yours. And that comes down to you. Now... If you avoid all of this, I mean, what well, we've gone through what happens if you avoid it, but I could go on and on about what, there's just some real horror stories <laughs> of what can happen if you avoid it. Because let's be honest, right? You might be listening to this and have been in business for 10 years and you're sat here thinking, shit, this is me. I have not done it even though I should have done and that was eight years ago and now we've still got someone maybe and you still need to have the conversation. Like, I get that it's hard. I get that it's uncomfortable. I get that we don't want to do it. However, we do need to have difficult conversations sometimes and it is important. And what I want to suggest to you today is to think about how can you learn to get better at them? Because often we don't want to do the things that we feel unequipped for, that we feel inexperienced about, that we feel like we don't know what we're doing and we feel out of our depth. If you can step into a more refined version of feeling positive, feeling excited about it, and when I say excited, I'm not saying you're going to be jumping for joy having a difficult conversation. What I mean is being excited about challenging your leadership and understanding that this part of business is part of your friggin' journey and is part of how you roll and how you move forward. That's really important. Understanding that. Understanding that business is meant to push you in all areas of your life and your life skills and this is one of them 
Because learning to have difficult conversations with team members is like the ultimate life skill. Because you're going to have to learn how to have difficult conversations with your kids, with your partner, with your family, with random people in the street. You never know what's going to happen to you. And I really say that like, you know, sales skills is life skills, definitely. And I know many people agree with that. You know, so many sales experts and people who talk and teach people how to sell. Like it is a life skill. This is also a life skill. Learning to have a difficult conversation with someone is a life skill. Some of you might listen to this and think, having difficult conversations is easy for me. And that's fine. That's great if you do. But there are many, many people who are running businesses, especially small businesses, who really don't find that easy. And that's okay as well. So really, the first mindset shift I want you to take with this is actually just shifting the idea of like, actually, I want to learn how to get better at them versus dreading them and running away from them and thinking... I don't ever want to have to face this again. So think about, right, I'm just going to learn how to get better at them and try and be better with every single one that I do and know that it's never going to be perfect, but I can improve and and do a good job. The other thing to think about is about becoming your true leader and becoming a leader that you want to be. I talk a lot with clients about leadership design and what do you want to be as a leader? What do you want your leadership style to be? How do you want to approach leadership? And part of having difficult conversations really drills into this idea of leadership development and understanding what are people perceive you to be? Because leadership's a lot about perception. It's a lot about, you know, reputation. It's a lot about communication and representation. What do you represent in your business? and in your team, and in your leadership as an individual. Because if you are someone where the people in your team will turn around and say, do you know what, X person is a really good leader, or she does not put up with any shit, or she really values each person equally in the business, and therefore will stand up for whoever needs standing up for. Like, you have to decide what you want to be. If you want to be a passive leader, be a passive leader, and work out what that means for you. But I think it's really important that you look deep into how do difficult conversations fit into your leadership model and what you want to be in the world. Because, you know, some people are really good at having difficult conversations, some people aren't. Some people don't even ever have a difficult conversation because they just choose not to or they'll pass it to someone else. Please, please don't pass it to someone else. Like... You can deal with it however you want to deal with it, but I really would not recommend passing it to someone else. If you need to have a difficult conversation with someone, you have a difficult conversation with them. And that is so, so important. The other thing I want to talk about is the fact of if you keep putting off having difficult conversations, the reality of it is it's costing you shitloads of money. And sometimes you just need to think like a CEO. You need to get your CEO hat on and just say, hang on a minute. This isn't about emotion. This is about money. It's about dollars, pounds, euros, whatever your currency is in the bank of it's costing you money. If you have got team members who are not performing at the best that they should be or are not doing what you employed them to do in the first place or hired them to do in the first place, then you've got an issue because you've got a money leak and you've got money that's fallen out of the arse of your business and you're never going to see again. And so you have to make a real conscious decision to say, hang on a minute, This isn't about like me having an emotional issue with X, Y, Z thing. It's about me saying, oh, right, okay, I've got to put a stop to this because it's costing my business money. And if you're listening to this podcast, you will be an impact driven, value orientated individual who is building a business for purpose. So it's highly likely that you want money to do great things, to donate, to do good impact things, to employ more people, to give people a higher salary. Like, A lot of people in my world are very much on that kind of mindset. But if you are then, on the other hand, allowing this to happen and allowing money leaks to happen all over because you can have a team where there's more than one person like this, then think about the money you're losing. Think about the money that's just randomly disappearing everywhere, left, right and centre. I also finally want to touch on, before I talk about how to actually have a difficult conversation, I want you to think about and remember throughout this process that often this is not about you. People make this about themselves, especially, you know, CEOs and business owners who maybe don't have a lot of leadership experience or maybe just don't, you know, they find this part of business hard. They forget that it's not about them. They make it all about them, even though it's not about them at all. And that is something that's very important. 
It's not about you. It's about your business. And you and your business are not the same thing. They're separate. But also, it's about the person that you're talking to. Or the situation might be that it's not actually about the person you're talking to and it's about something else completely entirely. But it's rarely, rarely ever about you specifically, the CEO, the business owner, the leader, the director. So pull your head out of your arse and just put your integrity on the line and just put yourself out there bare and think, yeah, do you know what? This isn't about me. I'm not going to make it about me. It's about the business and what the business needs and what the best thing is for your business and your stakeholders. That's really important. It's about stakeholder management and stakeholder expectation and what have you committed to for people. If you've committed to your clients about X, Y and Z thing and then in reality behind the scenes it's not that, it's not the best, you know? I'm not saying everything has to be like hunky-dory to the T because the reality of it is it's business, it, it doesn't exist like that. But you've got to be aligned in some way to the message that you're saying from an external perspective. Internally, it should make sense. So how do you have difficult conversations with team members? Well, obviously this depends on the specific situation, the issue, the problem, the whole context, right? So this is not going to work for everything and it's going to change depending on what you're doing. But as a general rule, if it is just something that you need to just bring up with someone before it escalates to this massive issue then just say it in normal conversation. Don't make it this huge thing where you're like, oh, I need to speak with you because that just panics people and that's not okay. You can literally just say it in conversation if you have a meeting or something where there's just one-on-one, like whenever you have a one-on-one, you can bring it up and you can say things and you can be really open and honest. And actually, it often can be a really great time for you to also ask for feedback because if you're giving them feedback, say to them have you got any feedback for me about how I show up or how my manager or how your role is or you know get them talking because that is a lot easier and a lot more of a two-way conversation than you just going in guns blazing and having like an issue with someone and this is why I'm saying if you can nip it in the bud first because having a small conversation with someone so much easier than having this massive big thing if sorry let's go back so you have this really like brief conversation agree on some things in that conversation agree on some improvement points agree on some next steps and document them now the documentation process doesn't have to be this like massive form it could just be on your one-to-one notes and on your check-in that's written on there but it needs to be documented somewhere ideally it needs to be documented in a place where two people can see it together so that everyone's on the same page and no one's questioning and saying like i didn't say that or they said that or whatever if you are having to have a difficult conversation that has been a collimation, con- 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 I can't say this. <laughs> oh no, I can't say that word. Oh, should I attempt it? No, I'm not going to. I can't even say it. But um, a culmination. No, I think you know which word I mean. Of multiple different situations, then that's when it gets a bit more tricky because it, it gets harder for you as the leader. Because the person turns around and goes, well, I didn't even know. Or you haven't said. Or it can feel very, like, personal. And this is why I try and advise people where possible to just start conversations early and to keep things going. Because often there can be really normal reasons as to why someone's underperforming or why this thing's happened or that thing's happened or this thing's not happening. And you might not know because you haven't asked them. So that's why these casual, more frequent conversations are much better than these big massive one-off things but if you do have to have a really serious conversation you need to check legally obviously of what your situation is like how do you need to approach it how many people do you need in the room how do you need to document it etc etc that's not this is not the video for that but you need to find out in your country in your industry etc what that means depending on the type of employment that you have with this person but from a more just practical sense You need to make sure you put the person at ease. This isn't an opportunity for you to just go hell for leather at someone because you're really pissed off. Because often what happens is really inexperienced people do this and then they just start ranting and raving to this poor person who they're getting ranting and raved about nothing to do with their job role, but it's the first time someone, the first time the CEO's had time to actually like vent. And so all of a sudden it comes a therapy session for them, which is an absolute disgrace. Like that is an absolute no-go. Like it's not okay. It's not acceptable. It's just don't do it. And then people afterwards feel really embarrassed and really bad because they've like, they felt like they've really fucked up. So go in with a clear intention. If you need to have a full-on formal meeting just to deal with this thing, then it needs to, you know, 
don't just say, oh, can we have a quick chat? Because that panics people, especially if you've got anxiety or, you know, just people get stressed. So like, say, is it a performance review? Is it X thing? Is it a solution finding exercise? Like, what is it? You know, put some, if it's a Google invite, put the meeting agenda in the notes section if there's a lot going on. You've got to be really open with people. I think if you can have these conversations in person, that really helps if you work in an office and you can see them. I really would suggest that, but for some people that's not, you know, a lot of us work remotely and have teams remotely. But try really hard to make the situation easy for both parties and not to make it this standoff either. I think when you can have these kind of conversations in a real, like, open space where there's a lot of breathing time and there's a lot of like backwards and forwards of listening that's really key because what you don't want to do is alienate people and if you alienate people that can get really difficult to manage and to get people's buy-in and to get people back on board like people will just fully check out now the the challenge with this obviously is is that it's just so nuanced dependent on the situation etc of like what it is so Forgive me that I'm talking a bit all over the place because I can't, I don't want to like give you an exact example for a specific situation, but I'm just giving you kind of pointers. The other thing to think about is when you're having difficult conversations with team members is that you need to be accountable to something. So if you say you're going to do something, you kind of need to do it. Or if they say they're going to do something, they need to make sure they do it. And so the accountability has to be on both parts, on both sides, with a real commitment. And you have to really listen. Because a lot of people go into these conversations, but they don't actually fully listen. And they just kind of like, they're so obsessed with what they're saying, that they're not listening to what the team member has to say back to them. And often the team member can give you some information that you just never even knew, that completely changes the whole situation, or changes your perspective on it, or changes why they do it. Or gives you a really easy solution. But if you're not listening correctly, fully, intently, you're going to miss that. Which then will infuriate the team member. So you've really got to think about this. The other thing you have to think about is, are you being a good example to that team member of how to manage conflict? Now in the moment, this is not going to come up, right? But as time goes on and years go by, How you deal with these difficult conversations will massively impact the person who is experiencing it as the team member. Because think about it at the beginning of the episode. We talked about that, how we've all had a bad experience. If you manage this really well and you open conversation and you have, you know, what might be a difficult conversation, but you do it in a really good way, that can completely change the trajectory of how that person who is the team member goes about it themselves how they hold their boundaries, how they see a shift, how they opt in or opt out to certain narratives in the world of work. And that, to me, is what's really exciting because I think people forget in these situations that how you behave is what you're modelling to them as a blueprint and as a way of, of going about work. So try and detach from the there and now and everything that's going on and think more about this is part of what I have to do and it's helping whoever else is on the other receiving end of that. Because a lot of people want to be told feedback. They want to improve. They want to really see what is possible from both sides. So this, when you're having a difficult conversation, I don't want you to see it as like, it's the worst thing ever and that like you failed and that, you know, there's no good outcome can come from it because I don't believe that. I believe there can be. And I believe that now more than ever, depending on the age group you're speaking to, people are open to change. They're open to expanding. They're open to improving themselves. People don't know what they don't know. And sometimes the things that we're having difficult conversations with people about, that we're getting frustrated about, the person doesn't even know they're doing. Or they don't even know that they haven't been told how to do something. And so when we have these conversations, this is why I'm saying get out of your own self and your ego because it's not about you. It's about believing and trusting that your business is worth more than allowing your emotions to take over it. But your business is also more meaningful to not help people because you should want to help people and you want to build a team with a culture that's really great. 
And I would argue that, you know, places and organisations that have really strong teams and a strong culture have difficult conversations. It's just called being an adult. It's called doing the things, doing the shit, being really open and honest. Because as much as you're going to have stuff that that you're annoyed with, they're probably going to have stuff that really that you do that pisses them off. And so having that two-pronged approach is really key and the backwards and forwards I think is crucial for making it work really well. One of the final things I want to finish on and if you want more on this, if you've enjoyed this and actually you're like can we have some more clear examples or can we go into it on like a real minute basis, let's chat. I can always maybe do another episode but what I do want to finish on is the idea of just reminding you again of if you don't do this. If you have a freelance team Maybe you're a small business, maybe you make seven, eight, nine, ten grand a month, fifteen grand a month, twenty grand a month, and you are not employing people and you're freelancing and you're hiring them and, and that can feel like, oh I don't know, do I have the authority to have a conversation? Do I not? Like what do I do? I just want to leave you with this. Most of the time when people come to me with an issue like that, where they know deep down this person is not right for the business, or they want them to be right but it isn't working out. of the time it doesn't work out long term and I will be as brutal once I've heard all the information and I've listened and I've seen what's gone on I will turn around at some point and say you got to get rid of them it's not going to work and people who are at that state of business really 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 struggle with just cutting people off and saying this is not working and I get that I understand right you spend a lot of time trying to hire you spent a lot of effort and thought and you're really like trying to make it work but sometimes I can just see from the outside and I just know it's not going to work and I you know I'm open to being corrected but from seeing numerous businesses around the world of various sizes but I'm specifically talking about the the small business that's scale and size it just doesn't work you don't have the infrastructure in place to be able to change people corporates don't you can't even in corporate do it let alone in a small business But in a small business, even more so. If it doesn't work, it doesn't fit, the person's not it. After, you know, a decent period of time, it's like, no, that's not going to change. And so many people hang on to the person that they shouldn't be hanging on to for three months, four months, six months, a year, two years before we finally get to the point of getting rid of. And, And the thing that is really hard about that is that there's so much time and energy and resources wasted. Businesses' revenue from one having one wrong person in a freelance team can literally take a massive plunge in their growth trajectory. I've seen it happen. I've seen it this year. I had a client happen for. Damaged four months of growth figures. Just couldn't do it. And that was from one team member. And they had a team of a really, like a decent chunk of people. And people underestimate the power of this. But you have to have difficult conversations with people. Whether that's about performance, it's about whether or not they're going to continue in the business, whether it's about how they do certain things. Just, you need to have them. So don't put them off. Don't run away from them. Instead, commit to stepping into the business person that you want to be, that you said you wanted to be, however long ago. And understand that part of this journey is challenging. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. But this all is making you become a better businesswoman and a better leader. Maybe we will do an episode on knowing when it's time to kind of end a relationship or when it's when it's time to you know get a new team member or something like that because I know that that is something that no one talks about but yet that is (laughs) something that's really big and it is hard in the industry sometimes to to get your head around. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. I hope it's given you some pointers. It's definitely not the whole story in terms of how to have difficult conversations, but I hope it's given you some thought process. And if you are in a position where you know you've listened today and you think, yeah, do you know what? There's one person or two people or three people in your business where you know you need to do something about that and you feel like you do not have a clue and you feel really stuck or you just, you know what you need to do, but you feel like you can't do it. Come and have a conversation with me and let's see if we can, I can create a strategy for you around that and help you with it. I can coach you through it or guide you through it, depending on what you need and depending on the wider business to support you with this. Because it sounds very simple on paper. You've listened to this and it sounds, you know, I'm saying do this, do that. Like, I know in reality, the application is challenging. It is hard. It is 
difficult to do it once and then also do it again because that's the other thing you don't just do this once you you've got to follow up you've got to check in you've got to review like this is a longer term process than just a one-time action and so if this is something that you're like yeah do you know what our team really needs a refresh it needs an overhaul it also needs a support for the people that are there then we can have a conversation around team dynamics and around improving team performance and a whole host of different things team structure so you can either reach out, you can visit the website, www.maejames.com. You can um, find me on Instagram at may.james underscore. There's lots of different ways of contacting me, but reach out and let's have a chat about what that looks like. So I will speak to you next week in the next episode. In the meantime, feel free to go back through the catalogue of episodes. Uh, there is some amazing, really cool episodes in the catalogue now. So feel free to have a scroll. And I would absolutely love if you could leave a review. It really helps us. Thanks so much and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind the scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time.